Hello students, today we will discuss about the structure of eyelid. Most of the time you have the question write down the layers of the eyelid. So let us discuss about this question. So when you will have the globe of the eye, you know that anteriorly it is protected by the eyelids. Now the upper eyelid is larger in the size as compared to the lower eyelid. Then you will have a one very important uh, terminology and that terminology is known as palpebral fissure. Now what do you mean by the palpebral fissure? When you will see the eye, there is a gap is present between the lower margin of upper eyelid and upper margin of lower eyelid. Now this gap is known as palpebral fissure, clear? Now on both the ends of the palpebral fissure, you will find the angles of the eye. Now these angles are known as median and lateral angles of the fissure or they are also known as canthi of your eye. So you will have medial canthus and you will have lateral canthus or you can say angles of the eye. Now what are the layers of the eyelid? Now this is the very important part of the lecture. So when you will have the superficial to deep, you will have the skin, then you will have superficial fascia, muscular layer, submuscular layer, tarsal plate and the palpebral fascia and lastly the innermost layer is conjunctiva. So in this video clip, you can appreciate these layer first so that you will have the orientation of the layers. So this is the outermost layer is the skin. Now when you will see the skin, you will find that it is not having any hair except the eyelashes. Now when you will remove the skin deep to that, you can see the circular muscle. This is the orbicularis oculi and you can see the fibers of the levator palpebri superioris. Now when you will remove these muscles, you will find that there is a arterial arcade is present and that is your submuscular layer. In this layer, you also having the nerves. Now when you will go deep to that, you will find the tarsal plate. Now this tarsal plate is important framework work of your lid which is receiving the levator palpebri superioris fibers which are known as Muller's muscle. Now when you will remove the tarsal plate you will find behind that these elongated ducts which are known as tarsal glands and when you, when you will remove the tarsal gland you will find this transparent membrane that is the conjunctiva. So what are the layers you will have on the eyelid? Outermost is the skin. Then you will have the superficial fascia, then you will have muscles, then you will have some muscular layer. Behind that you will have the tarsal plate, behind the tarsal plate you will have the tarsal glands and then you will have the conjunctiva. So let us discuss these layer one by one. First is the skin of your lid. Now when you will have the skin of the lid, it is substantially not very hard or not very protective. Why? Because it is very thin in layer particularly and this layer is having a very thin connective tissue which separate this skin from the underlying voluntary muscle layer. Clear? Now which voluntary muscle layer you will have here is orbicularis oculi which is a circular muscle in eyelid. Now the skin of the eyelid is not having hairs, so it is a hairless skin except along the margin where you will have the eyelashes. And these eyelashes are present in two to three or rows and these rows are present on the margin of your upper and lower lids. Now the, these areas are related with the two type of the glands, sweat glands and sebaceous gland. So whenever you are talking about the skin, the skin of the uh, eyelid is not having the fat, so it is devoid of the fat, it is not having the hair, it is having the sweat and sebaceous gland. Now you have some questions related to sweat and sebaceous gland that the large size sweat glands, they are present on the margins of your eyelid are known as Moll's gland. So what is Moll's gland? They are large size sweat gland. While the large size sebaceous gland which are related with the eyelashes are known as gland of Z's or Z's glands. Now the duct of the Moll will open into the hair follicle or they will open into the sebaceous gland, clear? So the duct of sweat may directly open or it may open into the sebaceous gland. So what is the sweat glands modification is small and the largest or the large size modified sebaceous gland are the Z's gland. Now there is a one important thing is that what is sty? So sty is a inflammation of the Z's gland. So whenever there is an inflammation of these sebaceous glands occur, the problem is known as sty. But the sty is a swollen, hard and painful condition which is present along the margin of eyelid or eyelashes. Clear? 
Now, when you will have the superficial layer that is just behind your skin, it is devoid of the fat. Now, this is one of the very commonly asked question that which of the parts of the body, uh, particularly the superficial fascia and skin is not having the fat. So, one of the answer is the eyelids. Now, it composed of the thin layer of the connective tissue and due to the loose arrangement of the uh, this superficial fascia, what will happen that is a very common site of the edema in case of the whenever there is a trauma occurs, so the edema touch fluid or the blood will come and collect into this area following the injury. So, there are two important questions which we have discussed. First, when you will have this skin, what is the gland of mole and the gland of Z's and what is the sty? And another thing is that which part of the bodies are devoiding of the fat in terms of the skin layer? So, answer is your eye. Now, when you will have the muscle layer, now when you will talk about the muscular layer, this there are two sets of the muscles are present in upper and lower eyelid. So, upper eyelid is having both striated and the non-striated muscle as well as the lower eyelid is also having the striated and non-striated muscle. Now, what is the striated muscles in upper eyelid? So, you will have the palpebral part of orbicularis oculi, which is a circular muscle of the eye. Then you will have levator palpebri superioris. Now, as the name itself suggests, it is a muscle of upper eyelid. So, it is not present in the lower eyelid. Apart from that, you will have a portion of the smooth muscle that is known as Muller's muscle and it is also known as superior tarsal muscle. When you will see the lower eyelid, lower eyelid is also having the palpebral part of orbicularis oculi and it is also having the inferior tarsal muscle. Now, when you will have the orbicularis oculi muscle, now this is the image when you will see the placement of orbicularis oculi. There are two parts of this muscle, orbital part and palpebral part. Now, this orbital part is present here which is attached on the bony area. So, this is the, uh, this orbital part. Now, when you will talk about the palpebral part, the palpebral part present in the eyelid. So, in this image, you can see that this is your area which is present in your eyelids. So, this area is your palpebral part and this area is your orbital part. Now, when we will talk about the pal palpebral part as we are uh, reading about the eyelid, you will realize that the palpebral part is thin and it is anchored medially by the medial palpebral ligament and laterally they will have a lateral palpebral ligament. So, here you will have one ligament on the medial side, you will have the one ligament on the lateral side. Now, the fibers of this part that means the fibers which are present in the lids. We are not talking about the fibers of this area, that means we are not talking about the orbital part. Now, this areas of the muscle which are present in the upper and lower eyelid, which are known as palpebral part, attached on the medial side with the medial palpebral ligament and laterally they are also having one ligament is lateral palpebral ligament. Now, this muscle is supplied by the facial now, you know that it is a seventh cranial now. Now, here in this image, what you are able to understand that these, this is your what we are talking about is the area in the upper eyelid. But you are able to understand that this part of the muscle, now here I am talking about, this area is pierced by the some fibers of a muscle which is deep to this is levator palpebri superioris. So, here you can see that these areas, now these fibers are the a part of the aponeurosis of this white aponeurosis of levator palpebri superioris, which is a deep muscle. So, the fibers will come out, they will pierce this uh, part of the eyelid, that means orbicularis oculi, and then anteriorly you will have the skin. So, these fibers will go and insert into the dermis of the, uh, this eyelid skin. Clear? Now, <coughs> you will have the second muscle is the levator palpebri superioris. Now, this muscle insert into the upper eyelid, so it is not present in the lower eyelid. Now, when you will see the levator palpebri superioris, its tendon expands in the form of the aponeurosis and this aponeurosis approaches the upper eyelid. Now, this is what you can appreciate here that this is your levator palpebri superioris. Now, whenever you are doing the dissection, you have to understand that you are 
having the two muscles in the upper part, this is your superior rectus. Now above the superior rectus, you will have this levator palpebri superioris. Now superior rectus ends into the sclera behind the equator, but this levator palpebri superioris is going very forward anteriorly and as it approaches anteriorly, it will broaden itself in a aponeurosis. Now this aponeurosis here you can see inserting into the skin of your upper eyelid. Now when you will see the pattern of the attachment of the levator palpebri superioris, you will find that this levator palpebri superioris is having the three sets of the insertion. Now one part you are able to see here that these part of the aponeurosis of LPS are uh, making a puncture or they are perforating this palpebral part of orbicularis oculi. And after that, they will attach into this area of your upper eyelid skin. So whenever we are talking about the attachment of the LPS into the upper eyelid, there are three pattern. Now, the first part is that the superficial fibers or the superficial layer of the LPS will go and it insert into the dermis of upper eyelid after piercing the orbic orbital septum. The middle layer, now this middle layer includes the smooth muscle fibers and these smooth muscle fibers are attached to the upper margin of the superior tarsal plate and it is known as the Muller's muscle or superior tarsal muscle and the deepest fibers will go and attach to the superior fornix of the conjunctiva. Now, there are three things which you have to understand in this image that first we will find out where is the levator palpebri superioris. So this is the levator palpebri superioris muscle. Now when you will see the anterior part, now this muscle is having three part. This is the first, this is the second and this is the third. Clear? So there are three part. Now this is superficial, this is middle and this is the innermost or the deep layer of LPS. Now what will happen when you will see this superficial part, now this is your orbital septum and anterior to the orbital septum here you will have the fibers of orbicularis oculi, clear? Which part? Palpebral part. So now what will happen that these fibers of the superficial layer will first pierce the orbital septum, then they will pass between the fibers of orbicularis oculi in this manner and they will insert into this skin or you can say the dermis part of the upper eyelid. So this is the first layer. Then we will talk about this middle layer. Now here you can see that this is the tarsal plate. Now these fibers are attaching to the tarsal plate and these middle fibers are known as the, this middle fiber layer is known as the Muller's muscle or you can say the smooth muscle layer or you can say the involuntary part of upper eyelid. Then we'll talk about this deepest layer. Now when you will see this deepest layer, you have to understand that this is your conjunctival sac. Now when you will see this conjunctival sac, here you will find that there is a reflection. Now this reflection is known as conjunctival fornix. Now this fornix is receiving the deepest layer of levator palpebri superioris. So there are three type of the splitting occurs. First is this superficial fibers. These superficial fibers are puncturing the orbital septum and then they are passing through or the fibers of your orbicularis oculi palpebral part and approaching this skin of your eyelid. Second layer is the middle layer and these fibers are approaching to the tarsal plate and this is the deepest fibers which are approaching on the conjunctiva. Now the important thing is that this middle layer fibers which are known as smooth muscle layer or the Muller's muscle supplied by the sympathetic nerve. So the Muller's muscle is innervated by the post ganglionic sympathetic fibers and these postganglionic sympathetic fibers comes from the superior cervical ganglia of sympathetic chain. So this is very commonly asked question about the nerve supply of Muller's muscle. Now the next comes is that when you will see the orientation of the uh, levator palpebri superioris, how the fibers will blend with the dermis of upper eyelid. So in this video clip you can see that 
this is your levator palpebris superioris. The anterior fibers are approaching towards the eyelid to become aponeurotic. Now, this is the skin. We have removed the skin. Now, you can see that this is what is your orbicularis oculi. So, here you can see that once you will remove the skin, you are able to see these fibers or the strands of the aponeurosis which are puncturing or passing between the orbicularis oculi. And then the fibers are inserting into the skin of your upper eyelid. Clear? So, this is the concept which you have to understand that when you will have the dissection of upper eyelid, when you will see the layers of the upper eyelid, you will find that the levator palpebris superioris comes at the deeper place and then it is piercing or passing through the orbital septum and then through the orbicularis oculi to approach the skin. Then you have the submuscular layer. The submuscular layer is a very small potential space and it is filled with the loose areolar tissue. Now this tissue, this layer mainly contains the sensory nerves and the vessels of eyelid. Now this layer is having a clinical importance because whenever you are, uh, you want to give the anesthetic agent in upper eyelid, you have to keep your needle in this space because this space contains the nerves. Then we will talk about the next layer is palpebral fascia. Now the palpebral fascia is having the three parts. One is the orbital septum. Then you will have the tarsal plate, which is the thickening of the palpebral fascia itself. And then you will have the medial lateral palpebral ligaments. So let's discuss first what is orbital septum. Now the orbital septum is nothing, but it is a actually extension of the periosteum of the orbit. So you will have the upper and lower margin of the bony orbit and the periosteum of these margins will extend downward and upward and they are known as orbital septum. So orbital septum extend downward into the upper eyelid and it extend upward into the lower eyelid. Now the orbital septum lies deep to the palpebral part of orbicularis oculi muscle and this orbital septum is pierced by the levator palpebris superioris which I just told you that this is your orbital septum. You can see that this part is extending from upward, this part is extending from downward. Now these are the parts of your orbital septum. Now when you will see the orbicularis oculi, we have seen that orbicularis oculi present here. Now this orbicularis oculi muscle is placed superficial to the orbital septum. And we have also seen that this is punctured. We have seen the strands of your LPS muscle. Now these fibers of levator palpebris superioris which you are able to appreciate uh, after piercing the orbital septum as well as this palpebral part of orbicularis oculi. So the palpebral fascia is pierced by the levator uh, palpebris superioris fibers as well as with the palpebral part of the lacrimal gland and some vessels and nerves. So here again I am trying to explaining this that this is your orbital septum. Clear? And here you have to understand that anterior to orbital septum you will have the fibers of your orbicularis oculi. So when you are doing the dissection first layer is the skin deep to the skin you will have these circular muscle fibers of orbicularis oculi and then you will have the septum. And where is the placement of your levator palpebri? So these are the fibers of levator palpebri and these fibers are puncturing both of these layers. That means they are puncturing the orbital septum as well as they are puncturing or passing between the fibers of orbicularis oculi. And then finally they are inserting in the skin of upper eyelid. Clear? Now what do you mean by the tarsal plate? Now tarsal plate are thin condensation of the fibrous connective tissue. So this is the first question that it is made up of. Answer is fibrous connective tissue. And these are the very important because they will provide shape to your eyelids. It is located in each eyelid and they will give the strength to the eyelid as well as they will support the structures of the eyelid. The upper plate is bigger than the lower plate. Now here you can see that this is the tarsal plate of upper eyelid. This is the tarsal plate of lower eyelid. So here you can very well appreciate that the plate of the upper eyelid is bigger and plate of the lower eyelid is, is smaller. 
Now the tarsal plate, when you will see the attachment, medially they will attach to the anterior lacrimal crest of the maxillary bone by the medial palpebral ligament. While laterally they are attached to the orbital tubercle, this is also known as Wittnell's tubercle. Now this question comes very commonly in your exam, what is Wittnell's tubercle? So Wittnell's tubercle present on the lateral side of the orbit and it is a feature of the zygomatic bone which provide attachment to the lateral palpebral ligament. So here you can see this image where you will find that these are the two lateral palpebral ligament, these are the medial palpebral ligament and this is the tarsal plate which is having the attachment or continuity with the lateral and medial palpebral ligament, clear? Now the superior margin of superior plate, we are talking about superior plate, now here you can see that this is the superior plate, this is the inferior plate, now this is the superior plate which is having the superior margin, now where is the superior margin? Now this is the superior margin of superior plate, clear? So now we are talking about this superior margin of the superior plate. So the superior margin of the superior plate attached to the orbital septum. Now this is the very important thing to understand that when you will have the orbital septum which is a continuation of the periosteum of your orbit is having the lower part where you have the development of this condensation is tarsal plate. So this is the cross section of the upper eyelid. Now here you can see that this is the periosteum. Now this periosteum is sending a extension in the eyelid. Now this extension is known as orbital septum. This has to be first clear in your mind. Now this orbital septum is going downward and it will continue in the lower part as a tarsal plate. So if somebody will ask you what is the development of tarsal plate, so you have to keep this thing in mind that first the orbital septum develops from the periosteum and the lower part will form the tarsal plate. So there is a difference in uh, the tarsal plate by a line. Now this line, above the line you are using the word orbital septum and below the line you are using the word tarsal plate. So the upper border of the tarsal plate remain continu in continuation of the septum or orbital septum. Clear? So the superior margin of the tarsal plate is in continuation of the uh, this orbital septum. The deep fibers of the levator palpebri superioris, I just told you these are known as Muller's muscle or the smooth muscle fibers, they are attached to the superior margin of superior plate. Now here you have to keep this thing in mind that this is your levator palpebri superioris and these are the deep fibers which are approaching to the tarsal plate, clear? We have seen that the superior superficial fibers will puncture and they will approach to the skin while the deep fibers will remain posteriorly and they will approach to this tarsal plate. They will not puncture the plate or they, these fibers will not go to the skin. So the deep fibers which are known as Muller's muscle fibers will approach this tarsal plate only. The anterior surface of the plate also receives some fibers of LPS. So deep to the tarsal plate you will have the lining of conjunctiva and you have very thin connective tissue. So when you will go deep, now this is your conjunctiva and between them you will find this fascia or you can say the connective tissue layer, clear? So ultimately whenever you are having the tarsal plate in your mind, the first thing which you have to understand that there is a orbital septum. Now once you will have the concept of orbital septum in your mind, you have to make a continuity of the orbital septum and the lower part is known as tarsal plate, the upper part is known as orbital septum, clear? So orbital septum is always in continuity with the tarsal plate in both eyelid. Now here also if you will see this is the orbital septum of lower lid and it is in continuity with the tarsal plate. That means tarsal plates are also the part of this extension which is known as orbital septum. Now in upper eyelid you are having a muscle which is part of the LPS is Muller's muscle. Now these fibers are attaching to the superior tarsal plate which is not seen into the 
lower plate. So whenever you are having the tarsal plate, here you can see that this is the upper margin of the superior plate which is receiving these deep fibers of your levator palpebri superioris which are known as Muller's muscle or superior tarsal muscle. Clear? Which is here. So you have to keep this thing in mind that if I have to see this Muller's muscle, which layers I have removed, I have to remove skin, then I have to remove this superficial fascia and then I have to remove the fibers of your orbicularis oculi and only then you are able to approach the orbital septum and tarsal plate. Now in this image again I am trying to explain you that when you will see the levator palpebri superioris you can see that it is a deep origin near the apex and this muscle is approaching anteriorly and you will have this expansion in the anterior aspect. But my dear friends, you have to keep this thing in mind that here you are having the extension of periosteum which is known as orbital septum. So on this side you can see that this is the orbital septum which is visible in the upper eyelid and below that what is this? This is nothing but these are the lower part of the aponeurosis of levator palpebri superioris. So on this part what will come? anterior to the orbital septum, orbicularis oculi. So this lower part of levator palpebri superioris is going to insert into the eyelid by puncturing the fibers of orbicularis oculi. Now here also you have, have this idea that if you see this clip, what you are able to understand that these are the palpebral part, this is the orbital part of the orbicularis oculi and this is the levator palpebri superioris. So if we will remove the orbicularis oculi, now you can see that this is the orbital septum, this area and below that you can see the tendon or the aponeurosis of levator palpebri superioris. So by this clip, it is very clear to you that when you are having the layers, first you will have the orbicularis oculi, behind the orbicularis oculi you will have the orbital septum and behind the orbital septum you will find that the levator palpebri superior is coming from the posterior side. Clear? But in upper eyelid, when you will talk about the layers, now this levator palpebri superioris will puncture the orbicularis oculi which was present earlier here which we have removed. So the tarsal plates in the upper and lower eyelids are generally similar but there is a one difference which I told you that the upper tarsus is having the levator palpebri superioris which is known as Muller's muscle and that feature is absent into the lower eyelid. Now the next layer comes is the tarsal glands. Now the tarsal glands is also known as mebobian glands and these glands are embedded on the posterior side of tarsal plate. So the first thing is that when you, where you will find these glands, so they are embedded on the posterior surface of the tarsal plates. Their ducts open in a row behind the cilia on the free margins of each eyelid. So here you can see now we have removed the tarsal plate and behind the tarsal plate you can see these glands in both the eyelid and these are the opening of these glands. Clear? Now these glands are modified sebaceous gland. It is again a question of your exam and their secretions is oily in nature and what is the function of this oily secretion? It increases the viscosity of the tears and with the help of that it decreases the rate of the evaporation of the tears from the surface of eyeball. So the function is that they keep the moisture of your eye or your conjunctiva. They prevent the dryness basically. So what is the placement of the tarsal gland? Answer is they are embedded on the posterior surface of tarsal plates. So this is what you are able to see. We have removed the tarsal plates and behind that you can see the placement of the tarsal glands. Now once the tarsal glands if get blocked, their duct will get blocked or there is an inflammation occurs that is known as hordeolum internum. 
and once the inflammation occurs there is a cystic swelling is seen and this cystic swelling is present on the inner side of the eyelid which is known as chalazion clear so there is a sometimes question what is the difference between the chalazion and the sty i told you that sty occurs when there is a blockage on the sebaceous gland of the eyelid but the sty will see along the margin sty will see along the margin of eyelid but when we will talk about the chalazion when this swelling will occur it will see on the inner side of your eyelid because when the these glands will enlarge they will make a swelling and that swelling will irritate the inner side of conjunctiva not on the margin so the painful cystic swelling along the margin of eyelids are the sty but these uh, inflamed gland cystic swelling on the inner side of your eyelid towards the conjunctiva is the chalazion then the innermost layer is the conjunctiva you know that conjunctiva is a very thin membrane which lies the inner side of the posterior surface of eyelids this membrane covers the full extent the posterior surface of the eyelid and then it reflects on the outer surface of the eyeball which is known as sclera so here you can see that this is the part on the uh, eyeball that is on the sclera and this is the part on the inner side of eyelid so this part is the innermost part of the eyelid which is the conjunctiva and this is on the anterior side of your eyeball that this is the sclera clear now there is a one more thing is that conjunctiva that covers the sclera uh, is known as bulbar conjunctiva so this conjunctiva is covering the bulb that means your eyeball is known as bulbar conjunctiva and conjunctiva which covers the inner side of the eyelid is known as palpebral conjunctiva so this conjunctiva is palpebral conjunctiva clear so this is your eyeball so eyeball is covered by outer side with the bulbar conjunctiva while the inner side of the eyelid is covered by the palpebral conjunctiva and both these conjunctivas are meeting at this point now this point of the reflection is known as fornix or it is known as extension of the conjunctival sac and what is conjunctival sac this when you will close both the eyelid a dead space will form and this space is known as conjunctival sac so conjunctival sac is formed when the eyelids are closed so the gap between the anterior surface of eyeball and inner side of eyelid is known as the sac while the reflection of the two conjunctiva so this is the inner conjunctiva that means the conjunctiva of the eyelid and this is the outer conjunctiva of eyeball they both are reflecting on superior and inferior side and these reflections are known as fornix so there are three terms one is bulbar conjunctiva so this is the bulbar conjunctiva then you will have palpebral conjunctiva so this is the palpebral conjunctiva then you will have conjunctival fornix so this point of reflection is known as conjunctival fornix clear so now at the end of this class we are able to understand about the layers of conjunctiva or the layers of eyeball so whenever you have the question draw the cross section of your eyelid you have to keep this thing in mind that outermost is the skin then you will have very thin superficial layer which is not having the fat behind that you will have the palpebral part of orbicularis oculi and you are able to see that the fibers of the levator palpebris superior is passing between the fibers of or oculi to approach the skin then behind this oculi you will have the uh, submuscular layer in which you will have the nerve and vessels then you will have the tarsal plate now the tarsal plate superiorly continue with the orbital septum and the orbital septum is also punctured or pierced by the fibers of levator palpebris superioris and along with that you will find that the upper surface of the tarsal plate is receiving the molars muscle which is a part of the levator palpebris superioris behind the tarsal plate posteriorly you will have the glands which are known as tarsal gland and behind the tarsal gland ultimately you will have the thin layer which is the conjunctiva clear so these are the layers of the conjunctiva so that's all for the session thank you